Hi, I'm Andrew Gravett, and this is the Great British Chef's Signature Series. Quite often the first reaction of a guest, it's, ooh, chocolate is too heavy. I don't like desserts that are just heavy and make you feel sick, simply. As pastry chefs, we try to find ways to make chocolate super flavorful, but that you have that feeling of lightness. What I love about this dish is that it's simple to make. It tastes good, it's got my favorite ingredient, which is chocolate inside. And with the hazelnut, it's just a really good classic balance of flavors. Good morning, my name's Andrew Gravitt. We're at the Langham Hotel in London, and we're gonna be making a hazelnut and chocolate tart. So we're gonna be making a hazelnut pastry. Um, it's extremely simple. Classic ingredients, butter, flour. In this one, we're putting ground hazelnuts, eggs, and icing sugar. First of all, butter, the icing sugar, the ground almonds, and then we're just gonna put it on the mixer. We can do it by hand if you want. We're not whisking it, we're not beating it. We don't wanna put air into it. Putting air into your pastry will give you something that will bubble and the pastry will soften much quicker. And then we will gradually add the small amount of egg. And then here, it's the most important part of the pastry. We've got two weights of the same flour. A small amount of flour at the beginning, the second amount doesn't absorb any moisture and you should have a pastry that doesn't shrink. So, we're gonna add the eggs now. Then a small amount of flour. So that will absorb its moisture from the butter and from the eggs. And then the large amount of flour and the pastry is simply done. So the pastry just onto the paper and then just flatten it out. And pastry is actually a really, it's for me is a, an important part of any tart. So I think quite often we do pastry a bit too thin and if you have a good recipe of pastry you want to taste it. In this case for this tart, three or four millimetres of pastry should give us what we want. So that's the pastry and then all we'll do we would freeze it. We take it out of the freezer and this is the ring that we're going to use. We would just cut the ring and then bake the pastry on the tray with a mat and we will get something that's like this. The pastry, we're cooking it at no hotter than 160 degrees and what you get is a, an even baking of the pastry. You'll get a really good nutty flavour from the hazelnuts but most importantly the flavour will be much nicer. So the next part is the hazelnut cream. So again it's a really simple recipe, butter, here we're using caster sugar, we've got a pinch of salt in. Salt, we tend to use it loads in pastry because it just, it's like an acid in a product and it brings out certain flavors in, in the products that we want. Corn flour, the hazelnuts. And we're just gonna beat them. Whereas in the pastry, we just mix it very slowly and here we're gonna actually, we're gonna add some air into the mix. So we do beat it. So once the butter's mixed in with the dry ingredients, we add the egg and then finally the cream. And there's a lot of stories that we hear when we have to add things in slowly, we have to be careful with stuff. And in this case, we were often told you have to add things really gradually, really gradually. But what we do now and we've done for quite a while is question, question all of those reasons for doing that. Adding products in slowly tends to be so that we don't make gluten work, elasticate gluten. In these products, there isn't any gluten. You just chuck everything in and beat the hell out of it and it's, it's ready. So there we have the almond cream that we're gonna put into the python bag. Then we take our base and we're just gonna pipe into there. It's around 100 grams. Just do a little pipe in there. That. And then that, we're gonna bake in the oven. So the pastry was cooked in there. The, uh, the hazelnut cream, we're gonna cook around 170 and we just want it just to get a golden top. We're gonna to make a, a chocolate ganache. Ganaches are quite often, when they're made they're, and they set, they're set very hard. And so in your mouth, you have a very greasy feeling. And so by having a, a softer set tart, it melts quicker in your mouth. You get to the flavor of the cocoa quicker. Not having that feeling of greasiness is much more enjoyable. So the cream we're gonna to bring to the boil. There is glucose in this recipe. The glucose is just to give us a bit more silkiness in the, into, the, into the ganache. But you could use, you could use honey, although you have to be careful because honey is 70% sweeter than glucose. One of those boring facts that we wake up thinking about. So what we want to do, the most important thing when you're mixing chocolate and liquid, when the cream and the chocolate come together, you want the chocolate to be above 35 degrees. Why you want to be above 35 degrees is because we need to melt the cocoa butter, it's fat, 
so that we can emulsify it simply. It's the same idea as when you're making a mayonnaise, you have your eggs, you have your mustard and you add your oil gradually to it. Here we're going to confuse everything and we're going to make a mayonnaise backwards. So you have to imagine that your chocolate is your oil and we're going to add our eggs and our mustard to it. We're going to add a small amount of cream into there. We're just going to mix in some of the cream. I'm just going to get the chocolate melted. You can see that the cream is not smooth. It looked like a split mayonnaise. And very often it causes huge panic for people, but it's absolutely normal that it splits because right now we've got a whole load of fat and not enough liquid to make the emulsion. But what this friction with the spatula is doing, it's breaking down the fat crystals in the cocoa butter. So they're rubbing against each other and they're getting to the, the size of the water crystal. The, when the water and the fat crystals are the same size, the lesser thing that's in the chocolate sticks them together. So you're seeing the process now. There and now you've got something that's very elastic, very shiny and definitely not greasy. So that's your idea of mayonnaise. That's how a chocolate mayonnaise basically. And there's some viscosity, there's elasticity in it. So we could stop there, you leave that to cool a little and then you could pipe truffles. For us we're going a bit, we're going to add more liquid and then we're just going to blend it now. We've made the emulsion, the emulsion works, so now we can just add the rest of the liquid in. But this is now going to go super liquid, okay? And what I was explaining about the cocoa butter being your texturizer, as this cools, it's going to set. You could pour that onto a pancake and you've got a nice chocolate sauce. If you can make this in the morning of the day that you need it and leave it just at room temperature and eat that at night, you'll have the most fondant, fondant tart that you'll ever taste. So, the pastry's out of the oven and we're ready to pour the ganache on. So, we've left the tart for about four or five hours at room temperature. That's the ideal. Then we should be able to take the ring off, which we will. And then we're just gonna take the paper off All right, so we're just going to grate chestnut over it. So a hazelnut praline, just to give us more flavour. Do a couple of lines. This is the hazelnut and chocolate tart.